Well, good morning and a really, really warm welcome to our worship here at St. Peter's in Hesel this morning. Welcome to those of you who are joining us in person. It is lovely uh, to see you here in, in the building that we can meet in this slightly strange way, but and yet still be together to bring our worship to the Lord. It's lovely to know that some of you sharing with us uh, from home, uh, whether you usually worship here at St. Peter's or the Church of the Good Shepherd uh, here in Heswell, or whether you're joining us from somewhere else. And maybe you're watching it at some other time uh, of the day or all week, but we're delighted that we can share together uh, in worship. Uh, we're at the moment exploring the riches of Psalm 23 in our worship and in our preaching. And we come to that wonderful verse today where we're told that the Lord leads us beside quiet waters. And so perhaps we can pray that in our gathered worship today, wherever we are sharing it from, we can find that place of stillness, uh, to meet with God and to know his refreshing and his restoration. So to begin, it's our joy to greet one another, knowing that the Lord is here with us. And so the Lord be with you. 
We're going to join in our first hymn now. I'm afraid if you're here in the building, uh, we're not able to sing out loud, but we can sing in our hearts, use the words uh, in our minds and stir uh, our emotions with the music that we listen to. Uh, This hymn reminds us that God feeds his people. His word abides with us. So uh, we will stand here, and if you're joining us from home, you, of course, can sing as loudly as you like. So let's stand as we sing, Lord, thy word abideth. Trusting in the Lord's presence with his people, the good shepherd who abides with us through good times, through more difficult times. We open our hearts to the work of his Holy Spirit as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord our shepherd promises to restore our souls. And surely part of that restoration is the forgiveness and the mercy that he extends to us. His willingness to love us despite our faults and failings. So we turn now to a time of confession. Having opened our hearts to God, we confess those things uh, which we have done, which we regret, those things which we've not done, which we perhaps should have done, and ask for the Lord's restoration, his refreshing and his mercy. Once again, we use these words to pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, 
that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. those to receive the mercy of God. It's our privilege to offer him our thanks and to offer him our praise. And so we're going to use the words of the Gloria uh, to give our thanks and praise to God. <laughs> song of praise that is it's really difficult isn't it not to sing something which is expressing such joy and thankfulness to the Lord uh, I was here at a wedding yesterday and uh, we listened to two bits of music and it was just so hard and not to let your heart and I want to rejoice in thanksgiving on that particular occasion and when we think of God's mercy shown to us in Jesus it's, it's hard not to want to express that in song isn't it we're now going to turn to our Bible reading, the first of our, our scriptures today, and these are the words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please now stand for the reading of the gospel? We hear some words of Jesus surely picking up on the thought of this psalm, and David's going to read those for us. Thank you, David. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of John, 
chapter 10, beginning at the first verse. Excuse me. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The shepherd and his flock. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we stand, shall we pray? Father, thank you for these uh, wonderful words of Scripture which have fed the souls of your people for so many centuries. Open our hearts now to hear your voice. For we ask in Jesus' name, be seated. Uh, my sister-in-law is into upcycling things. Um, so she's quite good at taking uh, an old table or an old chair, something that's a bit stained and battered and might otherwise, well, probably not even get to a charity shop, more likely go to the tip. And then uh, kind of rubbing it down, um, varnishing it or repainting it or doing something creative with it to restore it and to give it a, a new lease of life. She recently sent through some photos to her, Sarah and I, of a, of a planter, uh, one of those old kind of black square things that was faded. Um, I think it probably would have ended up in anyone else's hands on a skip or in the tip. Uh, and then she rubbed it down and painted it seaside blue, put a new plant in it, and the kind of before and after pictures were really amazing of the kind of transformation that had taken place to this very simple uh, pot planter that she had restored. In the verses of Psalm 23 that we're focusing on today, just verses 2 and 3, uh, we have the idea of restoration and also of transformation uh, very much in mind. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. That's where we began with uh, Josh last week. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. So I wonder what restores your soul. Uh, at the end of the, the, this morning, I'm going to do the same as Josh did last week and just put three questions up uh, for you to consider either individually or to discuss with your uh, family or household or in a small group that you might be part of this week. And that's the first one. What restores your soul? Maybe in lockdown you've given some thought uh, to your own well-being. Perhaps there have been times, I think it's been times that all of us have been really wiped out, feeling weary, or worn uh, and tired. Uh, and maybe you felt a bit like that faded pot planter at some stage or that stained and peeling uh, old chair. And where have you looked for restoration been lots of talk and encouragement, hasn't there, about looking to exercise, taking a walk, breathing fresh air, or thinking about our diets and what we eat more carefully, or our sleep pattern, or investing in our friendships and relationships, and all those things are well and good. But this psalm places God very much as the focus, as the one who restores our souls. In fact, I hope you've noticed that in these, just in these first three verses of this psalm, just how personal uh, this psalm is and just how active God is in being the one who tends for his people as a good shepherd attends for their sheep. 
You can hear the rhythm of the poetry of this song, uh, where God is the subject again and again. And we, or, or me or I, because it's written in the first person, it's very personal, are the one that God tends to. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the one who leads me beside quiet waters. He is the one who makes me lie down in green pastures. He is the one who restores my soul. He is the one who guides me in paths of righteousness. There's a he-me rhythm to this psalm, which invites us to draw closer to God and to know God in a deep and personal way, as the original author obviously did. And so the source of restoration here is not exercise or good sleep or diet or friendship. It is the Lord as the source of refreshment, of life-giving water, of sustaining food, of spiritual restoration and even moral guidance. And so my second question to open up uh, will be that he-me rhythm uh, in this psalm. And just simply ask, where do you feel you are with God at the moment, at this time. And sometimes I think the image of this psalm can be a bit, a bit deceptive, really. Most of us uh, live in England, well, all of us here do, most of you watching probably do, some of you may not, but most of us do. And therefore, maybe when you picture of lying down in a green pasture, you have in mind a lush uh, English field with grass and big, white, fluffy sheep. And you can perhaps picture yourself lying back on a nice lawn, soaking up the rays, suns, the sun's rays. But actually, this psalm was written, it has its origins, of course, doesn't it, in the Middle East, where the shepherds kept their sheep in much hotter, much drier climates. They were often barren. Water was scarce. Vegetarian growth was sparse, certainly not at all abundant. And so the good shepherd would be leading their sheep through really quite a barren landscape, trying to find those areas of greenery, which had flourished at that particular moment, that they might feed on it there for today and then search out the next tufts of grass and patch of greenery for food for tomorrow. So this is not so much a pitch of luxurious, abundant comforts, but as of daily sustenance and food provided by the shepherds. Likewise, the still waters, the quiet waters. I think it is actually the case that sheep can't drink water from fast-moving streams. They need something which is relatively still in order to drink. And it's a powerful picture of God finding us or offering us those places of stillness and quietness for our refreshment. I think of a time as a family. Uh, we were visiting Canada um, we were by side a river. I don't know if you've ever been to the Athabasca Falls or seen pictures of it. They're between Jasper and Banff on the uh, Icefield Parkway. It's this thundering river uh, that goes over this spectacular waterfall. And you can get right to the edge of it as the water thunders past. Uh, our children were three and four at the time, so you're holding onto them tight. Uh, there are signs there uh, mem in memory of people who didn't hold on tight and ended up in the water and sadly died. And you've got this thundering water. And yet, remarkably, 50 metres downstream, there's this little place where the water just backs into a little eddy, and it's absolutely dead still. And we had our three- and four-year-olds playing in this still water, hearing the thundering stream uh, just a little bit uh, upstream. And on in the busyness and thunder of life, and all the demands that are placed upon us, where do we allow the Lord to take us to those still, quiet waters to refresh our soul, to restore our soul? Here's an image of God's generosity and seeking to refresh us and restore us. But actually, I wonder how we allow him to take us to those places of stillness. How we allow him to speak to us through his word as we read the scriptures and feed on the greenery uh, that he offers to us. And so in one sense, this is a very comforting psalm. It is about restoration. It speaks of God, the shepherd, who cares for his people. I mean, it's where we get our whole idea of pastoral care from, isn't it? The idea of a shepherd caring for their flock. The God who nourishes and waters us. But I think I'd like to suggest this scripture ought to take us one step further. It ought to take us beyond our own comfort and restoration, our own well-being into a place of complete 
transformation of God taking us, restoring us, but also transforming us into something new. Just look how active God is in the verbs in these two verses. He makes me, he leads me, he restores me, he guides me. This is a picture of God who actively changes lives, who transforms us if we will allow him to do so. So the picture is a person who's loved by God, the shepherd. But as Josh said last week, that shepherd is as much a ruler and leader as a carer and pastor. And this psalm is powerfully countercultural. It's declaring an allegiance to God, a person that wants for nothing other than God, and therefore who lives their lives in a transformed way. He is the God who takes warm, stained, battered, faded people and restores us to new life. He leads us to the water of the Holy Spirit who feeds us with his sustaining words and who leads us in the right paths or the paths of righteousness to be those righteous, faithful people whose allegiance to the shepherd is known and evident in the way that we live because he has transformed our lives as we have attended to him. And so my third question this morning is about transformation. How are you allowing God to change you? Because God is in the business of transforming the people he restores. As I finish, Tim, could you just make the three questions visible by clicking the little eye by the three questions? Are they there as well? Brilliant. Three questions just to leave you with. What restores your soul? When you hear the he and me of this psalm, where are you today in your relationship with God? And when you hear the verbs in these two verses, makes, leads, refreshes, guides, how are you allowing God to transform your life? Let me just pray as I finish. Father, thank you for the richness of this psalm. May you indeed restore us, however each of us may be feeling today. And may by your spirit and through your words, you transform us into people who live faithfully for you as our Lord and Shepherd. opportunity now to declare our faith in what we believe. So I'm going to invite you, if you're here in the building, to stand, to stand at home if you would like to as well, as an expression of our commitment to the Lord and our willingness to live faithfully for him. And so let me ask, do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God, his, in his son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we pray together. And Jenny Hewitt's going to lead us in our prayers for other people. So let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, that as our shepherd you refresh and restore us. Thank you for all the ways you guide and lead us. Go with us now and direct our footsteps. Help us to rest in your presence 
making time each day to meditate on your word and listen to your voice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray, Lord, for all those especially in need of your rest, protection and comfort at this time. Those who are unwell or receiving treatment and the family and friends of those who have died. We remember those in our parish, John Lewis, Yvonne Foster, Anne Jackson, David Fagan, Elizabeth Hewitt, Mark and Jackie, and the bereaved families of Shirley Bradshaw and Anne Craig. We have a short time of quiet as we remember any known to you individually who especially at this time need God's rest and comfort. We pray, Lord, that they may receive your peace, restoration and love at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. August is typically a time when families are on holiday. And we pray that those who are away or planning to go on holiday will experience that mental, physical and spiritual rest that only you can give. We pray for those who have had so much extra work during this time. All the leaders of the church, all those in the NHS and working in care homes, teachers, shop workers, and all those providing our essentials, such as electricity, water, and collecting our rubbish. We pray that they may have the opportunity to have a break from work, relaxing with their families. Lead them beside still waters, we pray, where they can truly find rest, peace, refreshment and renewal. And we remember too at this time the travel and transport companies so badly affected by the pandemic. Please, Lord, give them hope and trust that you are with them in these difficult and anxious times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift to you, Lord, the terrible effects of COVID-19, which are particularly severe in refugee camps and impoverished countries with little or no health care, and where even basic necessities such as water, are scarce. As we face an anxious time in this country because of the increases in numbers affected by the virus, we pray, Lord, that our concern for ourselves, that we do not forget those who are suffering so much, so very much more. Thank you for the advances in science that have, have been made to protect and cure us from this virus and give wisdom, guidance and inspiration to all those working in this field. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for all those leading your church in our country and throughout the world. Thank you. Lord, for our clergy here in Hesby, for Martin, Josh, and Lynn. And thank you for Mark Tanner, the new Bishop of Chester, and his family. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to lead, guide, and refresh them, and that you will give them wisdom and compassion in all they do. Merciful Father, accept Accept these these prayers prayers for the the sake sake of of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen.
you, Jenny. Uh, we're not able to physically share the peace by shaking hands or hugging one another, uh, but we can extend God's peace in greeting to one another. So can I invite you to stand as we acknowledge the restoration, the peace that Jesus brings to us through his body and blood uh, on the cross and which we can then share with one another. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's give, share one another a wave of peace, if that's what we're allowed to do. And to those of you at home, uh, the peace of the Lord be with you. As we come to uh, share communion together here in the building... Uh, we only admit at the moment to share communion in one kind, so we'll be sharing only uh, in the bread. Um, and I will bring that to you. So at the point of distribution, I will come and give you uh, one of the, uh, the wafers uh, where you are sat uh, in your pew. If you're at home and you'd like to have some bread and wine to share uh, with us, then please, uh, you might like to get some available and ready. And so we begin communion again. Please join in with those words which are in the bold type, which will be on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please be seated. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you've sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, this gift of bread may be to us his body and his blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love. And unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So as our Saviour taught us, we now in turn pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So we join together in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls wash through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. So the body of Christ broken for you, keep you in eternal life.
So together we give thanks to God and offer ourselves afresh into his service. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. So thank you very much to those of you who have been able to share with us here in the building today. Thank you to those of you who have joined us uh, from home and shared with us today or at other times uh, during the week. Uh, we're going to be offering this uh, parish communion uh, for the next three Sundays in August at uh, 9 o'clock. So what's that? That's the 9th, 16th and 23rd. Uh, those of you here, uh, you'll have worked out how to book in either by phoning our parish office uh, using a My Church Suite app, if you've got that on a smartphone, or clicking the link that you're sent in an email from the parish office. Um, I'm afraid we just need to continue asking you to do that for the next uh, um, three Sundays uh, in August. But if you're able to do it and you're here in Hesel and would like to share in worship in person in the building, uh, then please do. Uh, those of you at home, welcome to join us, but equally we'll be live streaming this service as we've done this morning so that you can share with us uh, from home or anywhere else uh, you choose to do so. Uh, as you come to leave, uh, please could you use this door uh, at the front. Um, if you could try and, we're meant to try and space ourselves out, so uh, it was the door that proved the bottleneck last week, so maybe if you could lead out from the front. If you do want to stay and uh, chat with one another, then please feel free to make your way into the rectory garden. It's a lovely sunny day. You're welcome to spread out across uh, the lawn and spend some time in uh, conversation and greeting uh, one another at, at, at appropriate distance. As we finish, we're going to sing our final hymn. Uh, it's a hymn, Speak, O Lord, in which we just invite the Lord to speak to us and through his word to restore us, to change us and transform us. So if you are here in the building, let's stand as we sing. Help us grasp the height. 
heights of your plans for us. Truths unchanged from the dawn of time that will echo down through eternity. And by grace we'll stand on your promises. And by faith we'll walk as you walk with us. Speak, O Lord, till your church is built and the earth is filled with your glory. So with that wonderful prayer echoing in our hearts, let's seek the Lord's blessing upon one another. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.